What are you drinking? I am feeling quite posh. I'm having a nice little lime and soda water. Oh, you are posh, darling. You are so posh. <laughs> Mind you, one is also on the wine as well, so... <laughs> Thank you, you know, so much for doing this, coming on, having a chat, that sort of thing. I feel like people are going to really see a different side to you today, <laughs> which is really cool. God, do they want to? You know, two years ago, we both joined Set Ready for NIFA. Um, but I always forget that you were only just turning 17 when you yeah. started the course, yeah. which is, you know, really, really unbelievable because I was nearly 22. So the age difference is, you know, fairly big. But I mean, what was it like, you know, kind of going into that course, that industry at, you know, such a young age? How, how did it feel? It was honestly incredible. Um, I was in my GCSE, yeah, so I got my results while we were on the course, which was ridiculous to celebrate with everyone it was so lovely but I think that yeah. year was the year I'd actually decided I wanted to go into film so I'd done the BFI Academy and then I'd done their screenwriters course auditioned for MYFA and I was like no I'm not going to get anything it's fine and suddenly mm. all these incredible opportunities were there and everyone was so welcoming and nurturing for the fact I was learning so I'm really grateful mm. that I got put into an, like, an environment with such attentive people who honestly wanted to help me no, that's incredible. I think what's cool as well, you were definitely, in my opinion, in the best film in yeah. Grab the Bag. I mean, how, how was, you know, making that film, looking back now? Oh my goodness, honestly, that film was so much fun because all the banter between the characters and stuff was just how we were on the daily. So it was written in, I think, a day and the writers were incredible. They were so funny. They bounced off each other and we had three days to film it but we decided to use two for some reason mm. and we just hung out for the day but it was so lovely and everyone was so supportive and even though we decided to do it outside in the cold and rain we managed to get through it and it was I couldn't have asked for better people to be working with on my first big point. Yeah. It was definitely definitely a personal favourite I think looking back now kind of watching all 12 films I think what I liked about it is it was the, probably the one film that didn't take itself too seriously and I couldn't. think in the <laughs> In the in the end, it definitely came across, you know, kind of as the perfect set ready film. So I mean, like people who like going to set ready now, and you know, kind of next year when this pandemic's over and we can start like getting back up again. What what advice, you know, would you give to you know actors and filmmakers going into set ready? Oh, I would say definitely network, because no matter how you meet people, the more people you meet, you will establish connections, lifelong friends people you might work with, people who can just be there to support you. It is such a good environment to be in. Also, just take chances and have fun. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. But you can tell when someone loves what they're doing, it comes across. No, absolutely. I think that's really good advice as well. So, I mean, obviously, you know, doing the set ready kind of helped you get onto other things like summer shorts. I mean, what was like kind of the step up? going into kind of like Manhunt, for example, with your summer shorts than, you know, doing a set ready film. Was there a big difference or was it kind of the same sort of thing? I think the main difference I found between the summer short and the set ready film was, firstly, we had a lot more preparation because we got the script in advance, which I think they do now for set ready. But for us, that was a massive deal. It was, well, I've got time to learn these before I go. And then we just filmed constantly. And the bigger budget was a massive help, but we were traveling across London. It was 30 degrees that summer and I'm in a little like PVC skirt. So it was very, very warm mm. and a lot of movement, but it was, it was brilliant if I'm honest. The film was longer. So I think our final project is about 25 minutes, whereas initially our oh, yeah. was only 10. Yeah, it's still being edited, so I haven't actually seen it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking, forward, looking forward to it. Um, but, I mean, obviously, you know, other things as well that you went into, I mean, you got to be a part of, like, two amazing productions in the form of, like, Jester and Slip Up. And in Slip Up, you know, probably the biggest fan of that film there is going, <laughs> which is, um, I mean, I love that film so much. I mean, how was how was playing that part? Because that was a very different kind of character, wasn't it, to sort of the characters you usually play? Definitely, yeah. I think for me, I loved having a transition where I could do something that was slightly more serious and memorable because... I do love the bubbly characters. I love having banter on screen. I like getting a little giggle, but I think it was so interesting to be able to explore showing emotion and vulnerability because I was 17 when I played that part. Mm. So for me, like crying on camera and the 3am shoots, 
Uh, and it was quite physically demanding because we were having to do a fake scene where he's trying to pin me down, I'm crawling away. And I didn't realize how difficult it is to army crawl. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was brilliant. And Matt Chandler was an incredible director for it. Like he really helped me with that. No, definitely someone I want to work with personally myself in yeah, the future. Incredible. Yeah, just so, I don't know what it's saying about that story, just the way it was conveyed was so engaging. And it was really kind of really clever of this kind of mystery of, oh my God, is, is she still alive? Is she going to come back? That sort of thing. And at the end, you kind of get the assumption that she is, um, which is really, really cool. Moving on to Jester, how was, how was that? Because that was, seemed like a much bigger production. Um, a lot more people involved in that one. So I mean, how was that compared to say like a small scale film like Slip Up? There were definitely more people involved. Um, so it was useful. It was lovely having extras around and getting to meet more people. We rented a pub for the scene that I was in and it was brilliant. We got to show up there. I had my makeup done and got made into this rocker clown type character. And I think working with Grace, who I adore, and I also worked with on Grab the Bag, was so lovely because we do naturally have a connection. And it was just really lovely to see her again and to work with Max. It was still really good because I think one of the brilliant things that NYFA teaches directors is to direct for actors and actually give them feedback and get involved. And I think I've been very fortunate to work with people who are very hands-on. That's really cool. So, I mean, like, obviously, you know, acting is obviously something you're really passionate about. Um, that sort of so, like, what was your, how did it begin, like, your whole acting journey? What was, like, your earliest memory of being an actor? How did it all start? So, I was your typical little drama child. <laughs> I can't hide that. Surprise me. <laughs> I know. It's really weird, isn't it? Who would have thought? But, <laughs> so, at school, I realised I, I could memorise things very quickly. So if you gave mm. me a poem, I'd learn it in half an hour. So I kept being asked, oh, can you do this? Can you read that? And then it ended up doing school plays and stuff. I remember singing a song dressed up as a little cat when I was six. And I really went into musical theatre for a while because it was what people did. Not many people were straight actors around me. There weren't that many companies in the West Midlands. So mm. I did that. And then I think I got to secondary school and I was like, oh, I like plays. And I just sort of followed it from there. But I, it's always been in my life. I've always loved a little performance. <laughs> really cool. So was like, was Nifa like your first transition into film? I mean, what kind of made you kind of, because obviously theatre and film are very different. Yeah, no, so they're what kind, of you, different. what kind of made you want to switch kind of into film? If I'm being completely honest, I'd applied for the BFI Academy when I was 15. Yeah. You had to be 16 plus to do it. And it was for right yeah. after my birthday. And I was, I was a bit on a whim. I was like, I would really like to look into film. I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't know if I want to go into like writing, producing, acting, whatever, like in whatever industry, but I know it needs to be creative. And I've done musical theatre, I've done plays. I want to try this. And I fell in love with it completely. And I still wasn't 100% no. sure what I wanted to pursue. So I did the BFI Screenwriters Academy and very quickly realised screenwriting is incredibly stressful. And then I applied to MYFA and I spent the whole time thinking, no, you're at the youngest age, you're not going to get into anything. Like, nobody's mm. going to want you there, people won't respect you. And I realised so quickly that it was entirely the opposite and people want you to do well and to succeed. And it's just, it's an incredible industry. I love being on set, I love the feelings. I did a bit mm. of modelling and I was with an agency when I was 15, 16. So they'd also mentioned that I should look into screen acting in case I wanted to do anything that was a bit of a crossover. And I don't think anyone expected me to fall in love with it quite the way I did, but here we are. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what's, what would you say is like the main difference between like film and theatre? Uh, I would say, I always think of it as you have to be a real person in both. And I think a lot of people think you're putting on some kind of mask in theatre and you're not. You're always a genuine person. It's part of yourself. It's just how mm. much you magnify it. It's the difference between a shift in your body language and a shift in your eyes. It's genuinely how close somebody stood to you. If someone stood 100 metres away and you're trying to convey something, you go about it in a different method to if somebody's right in front of you. And you don't change what you mean and you communicate exactly the same. It's just you make yourself a little bit more gesticular, a little bit louder. 
No, that's really cool. I've never I've never heard it from that perspective before. So that's actually really interesting to kind of hear kind of that side of it. That's really cool. So let's talk about our film. So yeah. we're in at time of recording this, we are in another lockdown. Yeah. And obviously Conrad and myself decided to, you know, make a film that could get lots of people involved in that kind of filming their own bits, that sort of thing, and then try and kind of beat this virus in the sense that we do achieve the goal of making a film by the end of this lockdown, which is really, really exciting. So why did you decide to get involved in this project, you know, of all projects? I will be completely honest. Part of it was I'd seen some stuff you'd worked on. I'd seen something that Conrad had written and I love both your work. So the opportunity to work with you guys genuinely was something I was very happy to jump on straight away and try and do. But also mm -hmm. I think it is so important that even if we can't see each other, the film industry needs to stay alive and the fact we can communicate and it can still be a group of friends having a real response of facing their fears and having to interact with the world around them. Yeah. Just because our world isn't physically together doesn't mean we have to stop being connected and I think the way you guys have done this film really shows that. So I'm so excited to be a part of this project. No, thank you very much. I mean, so you're playing the character Sadie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, 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 what can you tell us about her? I think Sadie is your typical misunderstood rocker. She felt like the family disappointment, so she's very scared that her friends are going to abandon her the same way they did. She knows she has no musical talent, but it's the lifestyle she enjoys, it's the freedom, it's being her own person. And I think mm. there is a little bit of Sadie in everyone, which I absolutely love, because she is unapologetically herself, but all she really wants is to know people genuinely care about her. And I think yeah, yeah. it's a really important reminder right now. No, no I agree. I mean, why, why do you think um, people should get excited about this film when it's, when it's done in a couple of weeks' time? I really love the story to start with. I like, I love the concept you came up with. I think Conrad's an incredible writer. Um, none of us have worked together before. So this is really like, we're really exploring this and the entire cast is so lovely and the crew. So I think it's a lot of very talented people who are coming together um, to create something brilliant, hopefully. <laughs> I also think the characters are so different and the fact that all those people were brought together Everyone can relate to somebody a little bit, which you always love to do in a film. You love to look at a character and go, oh, they're just like me. No, that's really cool. I mean, that's what's you know, kind of great about this whole project is kind of like you, like you said, we're sort of bringing everyone together during these tough times. I mean, you've sort of touched a bit on it already, but I mean, how important is it that, you know, people in our industry do keep going and don't give up on kind of pursuing their dreams and such? How important is it? I, th I think it's so important because the arts is part of communication and education. It's social, it helps people to understand themselves emotionally. It enlightens people to things they didn't know about, different perspectives on life. It's something we all love and enjoy. And even when you're having the worst time, putting on a film or a TV series that you really like brightens someone's day. And knowing that the people who are pursuing it now could be the next people to do that and could make something that changes the world or just changes someone's life because you made mm. them laugh at the right moment is something that's so beautiful and I don't think anyone should give up on. If you care about something and you love it, it is difficult right now. And the circumstances obviously aren't ideal, but it doesn't mean you have to give up at all. No, no, I completely agree with you. I think that's really well put. Um, so, I mean, final kind of thing, really, before we wrap up. So, once this pandemic's over, yes. once, you know, kind of going to the new year, it looks like kind of, at this time of recording, it looks like spring is when we slowly start to get back to normal if this vaccine works. What's next for you? What, where do you sort of see, I mean, I, I sound like nicer right now. Where do you see yourself in five years? Like, what's the big goal? Yeah, so I'm going to Oxford School of Drama to do my foundation this year. And then mm -hmm. I am hoping to possibly go to drama school. I'm looking into ones I might want to apply to, but I'm hoping to have an agent. I don't know, maybe be on a series, keep being creative, maybe do a film. In five years, I'm 23, 24. And I still see it as me having my whole life ahead of me. So I'm hoping to do some brilliant things with some brilliant people. I want to do the wacky projects. I want to make people cry. I want to explore who I am as a person, as a performer. And hopefully I'll come out of it and be able to help other people do the same. 
Mm, that's amazing. That's really well put. Well, Charlotte, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. So um, much. Really, really interesting kind of hearing your whole story. Um, for people watching at home, thank you so much for watching. I will put all of Lottie's um, social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, that sort of thing, uh, in the description below. So, you know, go follow her, go support her. I'll put some links in as well to go and see some of her previous films that are available. To go and do give them a watch and, you know, keep supporting the arts, that sort of thing. But apart from that, Charlotte, thank you so much. Thank you so much.